Hello everyone and welcome to this video where we will be building a cart system and handling checkout payments using Deno, Fresh and Stripe. Let's take a quick look at what we'll be building. We have this homepage with a bunch of items for sale. We can add them to our card. Whenever we add an item to our card, uh, a badge is incremented on the nav bar. And whenever we're ready, we can head over to our card and we'll see a table showing us all the items, their names, total, and the quantity. We can remove some. If there's more than one of them, it simply decrements the quantity. Otherwise, it will completely remove it. Whenever we're ready, we can go to the checkout page. Uh, if we click on it, it'll display a Stripe checkout session. We can enter whatever we want. The only actual information that needs to be correct is our card. So it has to start with a four followed by a bunch of ones. Otherwise everything can be random. Once we hit pay, it gets processed by Stripe and should redirect us to our homepage. Great, let's get started. In terms of requirements, if you don't already have Deno installed, head over to Deno.com and simply follow the instructions uh, for the installation. You'll also need a Stripe account for handling the payment part. So you can also head over to Stripe.com and create a free account. Other than that, we should all be set to start. So to create our fresh project, we can head over to fresh.deno.dev, go to docs, Create a project, we'll copy paste the command, name this fresh store, we'll say yes to Tailwind as well as yes to VS Code. If we cd into our new project and type deno task start. we should now have our basic setup ready. In VS Code for our project, let's first remove everything except for the index route file. And in our index route file, we can just delete everything here. So in this video, We'll create the main UI for displaying our items, which is what you see in the homepage. Uh, in part two, we'll add the logic for adding and removing items from our cart, which will also teach us how to handle state. And finally, part three will deal with integrating Stripe for the payment processing during checkout. We're going to first create our navbar component. I'll mostly be reusing the same HTML from the fresh Superbase auth video. So inside the components folder, let's create a nav.tsx file. We'll first want to export our nav component, inside of which we'll return our JSX element. We'll create a div. Uh, we want it to have a white background uh, with the BG white class. We also set the maximum width of the div we apply Flexbox layout to the div and allow flex items to wrap onto multiple lines. We'll also vertically align the flex items with space in between. And we make sure to center everything horizontally, as well as adding some padding and a gray bottom background. Inside of our div, we'll add the title of our app, followed by an unordered list to display our links with some gaps between the links. We're going to only have two links. So the first one is the home link, which redirects to the homepage, uh, followed by the card link, which will redirect to the card page. We can now add our nav component to our index route and check it out. So first things, Let's head over to our index route. First, we import our nav component. 
we then export the home page. We'll also return the JSX element. This will only contain for now the navbar component that we created. So we're ready to hit save, head over to our browser, localhost. If we hit refresh, we should see our navbar with our two links, the home and card links. Next step is to create our item data and our components for displaying these items. Since we're mainly focused on building a cart and doing the checkout with Stripe, we'll create a file to store our items for sale. This can easily be replaced by a call to a database or external API similar to the weather app video. Let's first create a folder called utils. Inside of which we'll create a file called items.typescript. We're going to export an interface called item, which will have as fields an ID, name, image, and a price. Afterwards, we'll export a list of items. For the images, I basically just went on Pixabay and downloaded a bunch of images representing whatever I was trying to sell. So shirt, pants, jackets. Uh, the only thing is to make sure that we place it under the static folder, which I will do right now. So I'll copy the images under static. If you want, you can always get those from the GitHub repository, which will be in the description of this video. With our data ready, let's create the items component, which will help display these items. Inside of our component folder, we will create a new file called items.tsx. Also make sure to save our data. We'll import the item interface after which we'll create our page props interface called items prop, which contains a list of items. The index route will be responsible for using this component and it will handle passing it the list of items to display. Next, we export our component called items component. We'll pass it the items prop and destructure the object to extract the items property. We then return a JSX element. We'll have a div to help us center the elements and add some padding uh, to help display. Followed by a title, which is centered with a large and bold text telling us to browse our collection. We then create a grid where we will display three elements if the screen is large. Uh, if it's medium length, two elements, otherwise one element with some gap in between. For now, we will only display the item name. So we'll map over our list of items and simply display the name. We're ready to add the items component to the index route. So if we go over to our index, we can import the items component as well as the list of items. Under our navbar, we can then make use of that component and pass it our items. Uh, make sure to change our items file to a capital I. So I will rename this to items with a capital I. And this should fix our message. All right, had to close VS Code and restart it and our message is gone. So now if we go to our browser and hit refresh, we should see a list of items and their names. Nice, but we want to display the images and include a button to add it to the cart. So let's do that. Inside of the island folder, 
we're going to go ahead and create a new file called item singular .tsx. First, we import the item interface, followed by the item prop interface with an item field, since our component will get an item as a property from the items component that we just created. We export our default component called item component. We pass it the item prop and destructure it to get the item field. After which we'll return our JSX element. We'll have a card style for our items. So first we create a div with a white background, shadow and routed, rounded corners. Uh, then a div to display our content. It'll contain a image using the item image value. We also added some CSS to make sure that all the images are of same size, thanks to the object contain class, and which will make sure it doesn't overflow its width and height. Next, we have the name of our item inside of a H3 with large text and semi bold font. And finally, we add the price with a gray text. After our content section, we'll add an action section, which will contain our button. For now, the button doesn't do anything, but in our next video, it will handle adding items to our cart. With all this, now we can update our items component. And instead of displaying the names, we can change that to use our new component. Make sure to import the island item component. And now if we hit save, go to our browser, we should now see our items being displayed with an image, name, price, as well as a button to add to cart that currently does nothing. This completes the first part where we've set up our homepage UI route and components. In the next part, we'll handle adding items to our cart and managing our cart state. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye.